Sponsored by Squarespace. Also, sorry for the audio quality. I'm moving. So that's the Grand Canyon, huh? That's it. Well, doesn't look like much to me. Not now, but they expect it to be a big thing someday. I fully support the unregulated consumption of dolphin meat. You hear the studio Hanna-Barbera and think low-budget TV with standardized animation. Yogi Bear or the Flintstones, smart, efficient, but not really ambitious. I could napalm one of these guys in the streets of Detroit and no one would bat an eye. Though the studio did try some theatrical movies, namely one that for over 30 years was either lost or insanely difficult to find in crap quality. A film that could have been a cult classic had people known it existed. 1987's Rock Odyssey. Laurel's quest for love is a fantastic fusion of rock and roll and heavy metal. A magical musical tour if there ever was one. It was pitched as a rock and roll fantasia, which sounds better than my pitch for a nightcore fantasia. A jukebox musical of a woman trying to find love through multiple decades, from the 50s through the 80s. Stylish, emotional, confusing, and with music that may or may not match the visuals. It's a mess that I admire, appealing to the primal sexual need to visualize your characters as you listen to music. But why was this lost for so long, and why can't it be released? Well, let's find out. It's Juice and Jam time. <laughs> I take you to a bit before 1982 where Hanna-Barbera were finishing up their two theatrical films, Charlotte's Web and Hades Song, both her family-friendly musicals with horrendous taglines. Come fly to a whole new world of movie adventure, Hades Song, and bring along someone to hug. Rated G. Buddy, I am not touch starved enough to request for hugs here. For their next project, the team was looking at more mature inspiration. I'm talking the likes of Heavy Metal, an anthology series of different sci-fi stories. Or American Pop, a jukebox musical spanning different decades. You may also assume Hey Good Looking was an influence for the greaser guy design, but that wasn't out yet. With a vision in mind, the studio began work on Rock Odyssey, a multi-decade spanning musical of a woman searching for love. According to Iwao Takamoto, the man who designed Scooby-Doo, he was present when the crew were pitching the musical to an executive for the channel ABC. That executive being, oh great, here he comes, Michael Eisner, who loved it. But ABC and Hanna-Barbera Studios could not agree on the budget. Without the extra funding, Odyssey's production was on the verge of cancellation. Yet both Hanna and Barbera themselves trusted animator Robert Taylor to co-direct it with them. Well, Robert actually directed most of the thing while the duo sat aside. Rob did so well directing their previous movie, Hades Song, that they kept the production going even without ABC's help. After all, he animated on many Ralph Bakshi films and directed the sequel, Nine Lives of Fritz the Cat. Ugh. Plus, he later produced Bonkers, Goof Troop, and Tailspin. Fun fact, Goof Troop is the reason why my brain is like this. Brain damage. His direction gave it that dirty 70s animation. You can smell the mystery stains from whatever theater this played on. Though this was made for TV. After assembling a draft, the film was again shown to ABC and made for a primetime special set for 1982. Which did not happen. Why? Well, before it released, executives at Hanna-Barbera and their parent company, Taft Broadcasting, watched the cut. Due to segments revolving around being drafted into the Vietnam War less than a decade after the war ended, it was a little too close to home as an executive basically told them. What was that shit about Vietnam? Dude, I'm sorry. What the fuck does anything have to do with Vietnam? Dude, I'm what sorry. What the fuck are you talking about? Meanwhile, Joe Barbera, who once admired the director's mature work on Ralph Bakshi movies, saw this film and shifted his perspective. To Joe, this was unreleasable. Rob was fired and in his place was Bill Perez, another experienced HB animator. Rejected by the network, they went back to the studio. If they had one! Due to their last film, Hades Song losing money at the box office, Hanna-Barbera's feature film division was closed down. 
It's a bummer altogether as the storyline itself was filled with tragedy, a woman struggling to find love through generations only for something to always go wrong. The story started in the 50s and would end in the 70s, but this movie was stuck in development hell for so long that they incorporated the 80s to lighten it up. Oh, and to save on money, they added an AMV. I am serious, near the end of the story, the woman gets a job at, I guess, a TV station where she bonks her head and dreams about Hanna-Barbera cartoons? Wake me up before you go, 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 leave it hanging on like a yo-yo. Wake me up. The hell was that crap? This contributes nothing to the story beyond, oh no, too depressing, let's lighten the mood. Hey, remember Children of Men, a movie where no one could get pregnant anymore as the final generation of humans face extinction? No more babies, kind of a bummer, right? Well, I know how to lighten the mood. In addition to the changes, I gotta also bring up musician and actor, Sketman Crothers. You'll likely know him as either Hong Kong Fooey's voice, or one of Stanley Kubrick's torture victims. <laughs> in Rock Odyssey, Scatman played a talking jukebox that introduced segments of the film. Sit back and relax, cause I'm gonna give you the facts. I do ba dum zoom ba dum ba da dum ba dum da dum ba dum da dum 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 as Hanna-Barbera delayed and tweaked Odyssey, Scatman passed away. In his place, Fred from Scooby-Doo and job security champion Frank Welker stepped in. With new lines and an 80s segment added in, the film was Frankenstein to completion. Finally, after five years of delays in 1987, Odyssey was aired, but only in places like Latin America, uh, Southeast Asia, Spain, I think. And for America... Uh, ah. <laughs> For about 30 years, this film was practically impossible to watch unless you found a TV rip as there was never a home video release. You see, this was made at a time when VHS or Betamax wasn't much of a concern to studios, so the license to all the songs were only approved for TV. If they wanted to put this on home video, they gotta pay more. Another fan of this movie, Notello, who helped with this video and made their own retrospective, which I plagiarized, asked the Warner Brothers Archive Twitter for a potential release. They took time to reply, claiming it's impossible given the amount of licensed music. All those songs to pay for just to salvage this niche film isn't much of a concern to them. Though, they'll still copyright strike any YouTube uploads of this film. Why bother? If it's only appropriate for TV rights and if those rights are still valid, would be cool if maybe Adult Swim or Turner Classic Movies could air this for one night. Well, actually, this did play in US theaters once. Other films on view this week run the gamut from a high-tech adventure made in Japan to a rock video feature made right here by Hanna-Barbera. <laughs> For one night only in 1987, there was a film festival called Animation Eloration? Elaboration? There's a C, you moron! It's celebration! This festival held the world premiere of the Brave Little Toaster, plus screenings of Robotech, Fleischer's Superman, some shitty cartoon about a lamp and a toy ball, La Puta, Castle in the Sky, a Hispanic classic, a Mexican classic, a Latinx classic, and of course, Rock Odyssey. Among the viewers was a critic who completely trashed it. <laughs> Fuck. A major complaint is they name dropped the likes of Elvis and the Beatles in supposedly the wrong decades while using covers. Apparently, it was a creative choice by the director. According to Scooby designer Iwao Takamoto, Director Robert Taylor decided that the classic songs that would be used as the driving force for the animation would be completely re-recorded. I tried to argue with him that the easiest thing in the world would be to buy the rights to the song and the original recording of it, but he was adamant. When Rock Odyssey was finished, he got something new. A new job. Oh, man! Joe Barbera finally called in a veteran story man named Bill Perez and charged him with doing whatever it took to make the film work. Bill was a capable guy, but there was only so much he could do. We'll be right back with more Odyssey 
after this. But first, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Got an idea for a cartoon? Want to host a website? Organize your art? Or sell stuff? You need a website. Squarespace. From so many easy templates, you can use their fluid engine to customize your site for all your needs. Posting your art on social media is a disorganized mess. You need a portfolio of your best work. Currently, I'm constructing the site for my upcoming Loki IRL pilot featuring character bios, model sheets, their interests, art, fan art, style guides, Favorite songs? Keep it organized. Go to squarespace.com for a 14-day free trial. If you're ready to look professional, get 10% off a site using my link. Squarespace.com slash rebel taxi. Check the description below. A one-night screening was all America got if you ignore the cameos and HBTV. These were VHS's Hanna-Barbera made that were more glorified AMVs mixing whatever footage they had. I always feel like The only way to watch the full movie is tracking down a crusty Spanish TV airing dumped online in the late 2000s. Yet there was also some obscure musicians who made music videos with TV rips they found. These were actually higher quality than the online rips, yet when asked if they still had the footage, they did not have it. But Lost Media Hunter Notello decided to piece together the best possible restoration of the time. With the Spanish aired footage, the music lyrics were in English anyway, but the normal dialogue had to be replaced. The only English they had was supposedly taken from a cell phone recording. Though talking to Nutello and others, it's not clear if it was really from a phone, but it just sounds like ass anyway. I mean long hair, dirty long, long power, and the feel. Suddenly, I feel less insecure about my mic quality. Thankfully, in 2023, a much better UK transfer has been added to the Lost Media Wiki. Discord user Jericho007 had a tape full of old airings in a box. This could be the best transfer, but who cares about that because Nutello came back again with a new UK airing of the cartoon. It's split into three parts and the footage is corroded, but it's the best we got for now, this time. For reals, until the next time. Yeah, I found my thrill. Oh, I don't remember how I discovered Rock Odyssey or when I downloaded it to my computer. There was just one night where I was hit by a several days long power outage, which is pretty normal for Texas apparently. With no lights or distractions in the apartment and seeing what videos I had saved onto my laptop, I chose to watch Odyssey. Going back to that one critic who saw its one night screening, I do agree. This movie is confusing, visuals don't properly explain what's going on, but the side of me that loves storyboards matching up to music, I was completely hooked in emotionally. The idealized fantasy 50s, the corny romance cover songs that I actually love, even that stupid Hanna-Barbera AMV that was jarring, yet was so overly cheerful I just accepted whatever was going on. This was a studio known for limited animation now exploring more surreal visuals, regardless if it made any sense. Hard to follow, but I could piece together what's going on. Wait, why does she have mermaid legs now? And her lover is a full-on fish? Are they a fish out of water? Is that what this is? Also, the covers are kind of appropriate given one of the first characters introduced is meant to be a poser, thinking he's far more confident than he is, wishing he was Elvis. But we really focus on Laura, this chick who just can't find someone she can be with. Whoa! Damn, son! What the heck? Holy ball! What the? Oh my god! Hey, good looking 1918! Oh man! Uh, I think it's a good time to mention she's based on the wife of the director. So, uh, where's our retirement home at? As I watched Odyssey on my laptop with no charger and a blackout, my battery held up to the final few moments of the film. I sat there in silence, blown away at what I saw, yet was kinda sad. 
Unless you caught an airing in another country at a specific time, no one ever saw this. Odyssey is the kind of flawed cult classic that could have been someone's big inspiration to pair up their storyboards to music. One making you wonder what songs later decades would have entailed. Many of the artists and voices who made the special are long dead. All this work and almost no one ever got to see it, nearly inaccessible for around 30 years before an online rip was found in the late 2000s. Due to license issues, it may never get an official release. But like I said before, with this made for only TV broadcast rights, maybe this could be aired in high quality on Adult Swim or something. If you want that possibility, click the downloads to Rock Odyssey and share it with anyone who likes jukebox musicals. This is begging to be a niche cult favorite more people should watch. Ralph Bashi, creator of Fritz the Cat and Lord of the Rings, now takes modern animation a quantum leap forward with a motion picture of incredible beauty. American Pop, the story of one family, four generations, in love with the greatest music of all time. American Pop, the state of the art in living animation. Rated R, coming soon to a theater near you. That's why we eat grape nuts. See, grape nuts.